the original open source license. It was created for the Berkeley software distribution of Unix back in the late 90s or late 70s, early 80s, I do believe. Um, it is an extremely, extremely permissive license. It actually does allow you to use it for pretty much anything that you want, including in commercial software. Um, Microsoft, in fact, combined a lot of BSD licensed software into early versions of Windows. The entire TCP ISP stack in Windows 95 and Windows NT was BSD licensed. In fact, if you uh, went and looked at the Telnet binary, I think it still has the BSD license in it, the BSD strings in it. Um, comes in a diff bunch of different variations as people have gotten more free. The original clause actually, the original license actually had a clause in there that said, if you use BSD licensed software, you must advertise that you have used BSD licensed software. That kind of got cut out because it doesn't really meet with the goals of open source and free software as that has evolved. So the three clause uh, version is, or the revised BSD license, is the most common one now. And it basically says, somewhere, say, you know, somewhere in the source code, say that you've used this and that you've emptied the copyright tag. Pretty much all of its restrictions. Uh, the free BSD project has gone one step further and cut out another clause. Um, which basically says that you can use the original product to advertise your product. Um, if you don't want your software used in commercial products, perhaps you should look at the X11 license. It's often called the MIT license, but there's actually been a whole bunch of licenses that came out of MIT. This is the one that most people need to say. It's very similar to the BSD licenses, license in that it allows you to do most anything with this code. The one thing that you cannot, you can use it in a commercial product, but you cannot use it in a closed source project, product. It has a clause that says you must distribute the source. That's the big difference between the BSD and the X11. The Apache license. This one is becoming an extremely, extremely popular license. Uh, it's used on quite a number of very large projects. Everything that comes out of the Apache project is Apache license. Obviously. This includes the Apache web server, which is by far the most common web server on the internet. And, close to my interest, the Android operating system is mostly licensed under the Apache license. Uh, it's actually a very detailed license, very detailed about what your rights are and what your restrictions are. It's uh, very popular among Java developers. One of the clauses, one of the things that I like about this one is that it actually has a clause in it that states that if you use the Apache license software, if you bring a patent-based suit against the author or any other users of the software, your right to the software is rejected. Now, how does that not discriminate? Because this is an OSI uh, approved license. I th once again, I'm not a lawyer, but my understanding is that it's not discriminatory because you brought the action. The person being rejected from using the software has brought, has made a choice to bring the action, and that's covered by the license. It's one of the new things in open source licensing is to have patent protection built into the license. The Apache license is one of the first ones to do that. Uh, the GPL license has a new version, version 3.0, that actually includes that as well. The older 2.0 license does not. Uh, once you've chosen a license, I'm not saying you have to choose those four, but those are some recommendations for where to start. How do you apply the license? How do I legally state that this project is now open source? First thing you got to do is state that this project is copyrighted. It is automatically copyrighted in the U.S. once you create it. You don't have to register it. But to uh, to receive copyright and license protection, you have to state that this file is copyrighted. Usually that's as simple as copyright, year, name. No big deal. Include a notice stating what license this file or set of files is released on. When you open up a file, first thing you should see at the top is your copyright notice followed by this software is licensed under this license. Go out to the website for the license you're interested in. There's examples of how to do it for most of these. You can just copy, paste, fill in your name. No big deal. Include a copy of the license with the software. 
I mean, I can state this file is GPL. If I give that to you, how do you know what that means? You need to have a copy of the license or at least a link to go find out what that means. What are your rights? What are your responsibilities? Often in software projects, you'll find a file on top of a copy that contains a copy of whatever license the software is under. Once again, I want to talk a little bit about hardware. As we've said, physical hardware can't be copied for free. I can't build a widget and then duplicate it for free. It costs me time, it costs me materials. And we need to kind of figure out how does that work if I want to open source a hardware site. Um, one of the concerns with doing open source hardware or open hardware is that almost all the licenses are focused on software. Very few of them have provisions for hardware. That is starting to change, but it's fairly new. Um, you kind of have to pay a little bit of attention because there are some licenses that say you cannot you cannot charge for distribution of things made from this. Probably not relevant <coughs> if you want to build hardware itself. Just something to keep an eye out for. Uh, most licenses can be applied to hardware designs without a huge amount of effort. Uh, exactly what is open source hardware? There is a working group out there uh, that's defining open source hardware. This is their definition. Uh, they are a working group. You can find them at freedomdefined.org. This is a draft definition, but it has been the same draft definition since I found out about it last year, so I think we're pretty close to final. Um, it's pretty simple. Open source hardware is a term for tangible artifacts, machines, devices, or other physical things whose design has been released to the public in such a way that anyone can make, modify, distribute, and use those things. It's pretty much what you'd expect knowing what open source software is. Um, like I said, the link's there if you want to go out and get more detail on it. Something near and dear to a lot of our hearts, microcontrollers. If you're going to open source a microcontroller project, please remember that microcontrollers are always going to be hardware and software. I have seen projects that release the hardware but not the software. Great, I can build it and it won't do anything. Please consider that. <laughs> um, you might want to apply a different license to the hardware design as to the software, to the firmware. That's fine. Just kind of keep in the back of your head when you're doing that, that it is possible to get in situations where no one can satisfy the license requirement of the package as a whole. You can just kind of, they can have mutually contradictory clauses. That's no good because no one never really used it. Okay, other things that you might want to license with your project. You know, you've, got, you've, opened, you've licensed your software, you've licensed your hardware design. What else do you want to license? Your documentation is a good idea. It's always, it's always a pain to go out and get a project and have no idea what to do. The images related to it, you know, the diagrams, the, that's how I keep backing up, the diagrams, any uh, pictures, pretty pictures that you spent time creating, uh, any sounds, videos, tutorials, anything that you've created for this project that you're going to open source, consider open sourcing them as well because it will help your users. And that is the primary purpose of something open source is to give something to your users. If you've created this stuff, give it to them, please, because it will make their life so much easier. They'll be much happier with your project. And anything that makes your project <coughs> How do you distribute your project? A lot of times nowadays it's a extremely simple question. Most of the time it means put it out on a website somewhere. It's not all it means. The goal of distributing your project is to get it into the hands of your users. It doesn't matter how you do it. You can put it on the internet, you can put it on CDs, you can copy it on thumb drives, you can write if it's something that you can copy on a piece of paper and hand out. That's perfectly acceptable as well. The goal of distributing a project is to get it to your, to your users. Do whatever best fits what you're doing. 